In today's video, we're going to discuss the genetic code and what to do if you're given a DNA sequence. So, if we start with the DNA sequence, we know that we need to transcribe it into mRNA first before we can determine our peptide sequence. So, we have a DNA sequence here from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. And so, for mRNA, our 5' prime is here and our 3' prime is here because these strands run anti-parallel. So starting over here at 5' prime for our mRNA, for A, our base pair is going to be U instead of the T that is in DNA, and we continue on this way. So for T, we're going to base pair with A, for G, we are going to base pair with C, and so on throughout the rest of the sequence. Now once you have this step, you have to recognize that this is written 3 prime to 5 prime, and we want to rearrange this so that it's 5 prime to 3 prime. And when I do this, I like to separate it already into my three codons, or my um, three base pairs to make up a codon. So three base pairs make up a codon. So when I rearrange it into 5 prime to 3 prime, I go ahead and make my codons with my three uh, bases. So starting with UAC. UAC is going to code for, so you start with your first letter here, your second letter here, so we have U, A, and then third letter goes here. So UAC codes for tyrosine. But that doesn't matter yet because we haven't reached a start codon. So we go to the next one, and we have AUG here. AUG, we start here, our first letter, A, our second letter, U, and then our, fourth, our third letter here is G, and this codes for MET. So now we can start our sequence and our polypeptide chain. So AUG is going to code for MET. This is MET in eukaryotes and FMET in prokaryotes. Now we have ACG. So we start here again, A. Our second letter, we start, we look at this row, so we have C here. And then our third letter, we look at this row, so we have ACG here, and it's threonine. Okay, moving on, we have G. So start here, G. Then we have A, go down here. And then we have G again as our third letter, letter. and so we have glutamate as our peptide. CUU, so we start here, C, then we go here for U, our second letter, and then here for our third letter, this U again. So CUU right here, codes for leucine. Next we have CGG, so we start again in this row for C, then we go to this row for our second letter, so G here. And then here, over here is our third letter. We have G here, C, G, G, and it's going to be arginine. Okay, A, G, C. So we have A, we have G, so we're here. And then C right here, so A, G, C is going to code for serine. And lastly, we have UAG. You can, you probably already recognize this as a stop codon, but we'll still go through it. So you have U, and then we go over to A here, and then UAG here is a stop codon. So, and stop codons don't code for an actual peptide, they just stop the sequence. Okay. So if you were to write this as a peptide sequence, you would have N as your beginning. Then you would have M, T, um, E, L, R, S. And then that would conclude it because again, UAG doesn't code for a peptide. So you'd stop here at the serine, and then put C for your C-terminus, the end of your peptide chain. 
Now we're going to discuss some mutations that could happen to these DNA sequences or these mRNA sequences. So the first one we are going to discuss is the least, the least detrimental and the least um, harmful to your sequence. So that's going to be your silent mutations. So I shortened some of the sequences just to make things a little simpler, but it's still the same sequence from right here. We're going to take the mRNA sequence. So we still have UAC, AUG, and here, instead of ACG, we have ACU. So we mutated this G to a U. But then if we look here, we go ACU, we see ACU codes for threonine. And our original one, ACG, also codes for threonine. So that's a silent mutation, where the mutation doesn't actually affect the peptide um, that is coded for because um, the genetic code is degenerate. Many, um, made, many codons code for the same peptide, so that's a silent mutation when it doesn't affect the peptide sequence. Now we're moving on to our missense mutations. So here, again, the same sequence, and then we get to GAC, which matches up with GAG. So this G was mutated to a C. And so now when we go here, we have G, A, and then C. Now we have an aspartate. Originally we had a, GL, or a glutamate with our GAG when it was mutated to GAC. Now we have aspartate. So that is a missense mutation when only one peptide is changed. Um, and now on to the more detrimental mutations. So those are going to be your nonsense mutations and your frame shift mutations. So moving on to our nonsense mutations. Again, we have the same sequence here as before, UAC, AUG, ACG. And then here we're going to have our mutation. But instead of mutating the last codon, we're mutating the first codon. So this U here was mutated from G. So originally we had GAG, and now we have UAG. And so when we go here, we have U, A, and then G, and we see that this is a stop codon. And so that is what a nonsense mutation is, is when a mutation results in an early stop codon, and this will almost always completely make your protein dysfunctional um, because you don't have the rest of your peptide sequence. Another extremely detrimental um, mutation are your frame shift mutations. So that is either the insertion or deletion of a base pair. That could also be an insertion or deletion of two base pairs. However, it's not a frame shift mutation if there's an insertion or deletion of three base pairs because if there were three base pairs, you would only have um, one peptide difference and the rest of the sequence would remain the same because these base pairs um, are in groups of three as codons. So here we have UAC and before this AUG we have inserted a G and so now that we have inserted this G here we are going to throw off the mutation or the sequence so that now there is no longer a, st a start code on here. So this, fun this protein is non-functional. It won't be um, translated because there is no start code on anymore. And that is all for the genetic code and mutations. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.